Hello, Husky fans. Welcome again to another edition of NIU Weekly. I'm Andy Garcia, alongside the Associate Vice President and Director of Athletics, Sean Frazier. Sean, great to be with you again, and I hope the family is doing well. Uh, a successful first edition of NIU Weekly. Why not do it again, right? No question about no no question about it, Andy. Um, same thing with your with your family as well. You know what? It's all about staying safe right now, and uh, we are, we really appreciate you doing this. So yeah, we're hanging in there. We're hanging tough. Good, good, good. And uh, you know, you had your Fraser's Corner come out last week. A lot of things you discussed in there, but uh, one thing I wanted to discuss is you know we, we lost that 2020 spring semester for the student athletes, and and given all the budget circumstances, all the challenges, right, with that. What's the status of the 2020 NIU seniors in terms of ability to to return when the student athletes come back? Yeah, good question. And uh, yeah, we're, I think the NCAA is coining them the COVID-19 seniors, right, to be able to kind of uh, 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 you know, kind of bundle them and give them their own designation. So for us, obviously, that was a, that was a big financial lift uh, for us. And uh Quite frankly, we're not able to do all of those pieces uh, and maintain a budget, especially with the uh, the, the financial scenarios uh, the way they are and our current funding model and what we do. Um, we will allow seniors to come back. Uh, we're going to have to ha really depend on our coaches to work within the current cap. So say you have a particular sport in the spring, you have 18 scholarships, you've got 18 opportunities there. So within that particular scale, uh, that cap, uh, the coach will make the final determination along with the senior to see exactly what we can fund. Uh, if we can fund some portion of that, based on the, the legislation basically says that you can fund up to what they were uh, getting in the spring. So, so basically we have a range from uh, no aid to up to what they were getting. So we're going to work within our current cap limits financially. Uh, we're going to make sure that we provide opportunities for those seniors that want to come back. Uh, and then we're going to make sure that we depend on our coaches who have directed uh, uh, our programs and know exactly what our needs are. And also, too, we want to support our seniors, too, for competition. They've given up uh, th this point in their life to be able to get uh, this level of opportunity and this experience. And we need to make sure we support that. So short, long and short of it, it'll be some semblance, there'll be some opportunities, and there'll be some ways that we can fit all of the seniors who have dedicated their their careers to us back to them. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, good stuff there. And I wanted to also get your perspective. You know, we hear a lot uh, about the fall sports coming up. I know there's still a lot of question marks, but in your opinion right now, what do you think? Will we have athletics be played in the fall? I, I, I believe so. I, you know, I'm a, a optimist, right? The, the glass is definitely half full. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, this too shall pass. I think there might be some variation uh, obviously, we're modeling from uh, no sports to uh, starting up uh, as usual. You know, we're, we're still too far out to make that determination, but I think we're going to have some level of competition. Just don't know what that is right now. I'm holding out hope, uh, and uh, I, I think that uh, the good Lord will give me, a, give me a push right there and make it happen. So I'm hoping that we get past this virus. And the number one thing, uh, Andy, is all about health and safety. So once we get that corralled and that done, then we'll be able to move forward. And like we said last week, Sean, it, you know, sports is going to be such a huge uh, thing for this country to get back, get back to some type of norm normal, normal, normal you know, thing. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I, like you said, I hope and I hope it happens. I know we all want it to be in a safe environment, healthy environment. So we're looking forward to that as well. Uh, we had a great talk with the Huskies head football coach, Thomas Hammock, last week. This week, in a, just a couple minutes, we're going to talk to the Huskies head men's basketball coach, Mark Montgomery. But before we get to Mark, you know, we want to talk a little bit about season tickets for NIU football for the upcoming season. And I know the deadline has been pushed back. NIUHuskies.com. Get online. Get your tickets now. That that deadline's been pushed back to May 15th. And, and fans still have an opportunity to get to those season tickets, hopefully with a full season to come. No question. No question at all. That's why the holding out hope uh, and seeing where we are, it's about the health and safety component first. But pushing it back to the 15th gives us some opportunities, our season ticket members and our supporters, a chance to be able to evaluate certain things and uh, take a look at the unique packages that we have. And I'm excited about it. It's going to be a great season. Uh, I know just by talking to Coach Hammock and the coaching staff and the student athletes that they're raring to go. They're chomping at the bit yeah. uh, to get back out there. So uh, I definitely uh, uh, need your support. 
uh, obviously our season ticket members, you are our lifeblood of what we do here. So I want to thank you up front before you make any purchase that I thank you for being a season ticket member. And I leave a message, 815-753-PAC, or go online again, niuhuskies.com. has got all the information. That deadline's been pushed back May 15th for 2020 NIU football season tickets. Hopefully you can get online, hopefully get on the phone and get your tickets for the upcoming football season. As we mentioned, had a great talk with head coach Thomas Hammock of football last week. We're now going to be joined by a Huskies head men's basketball coach, Mark Montgomery. He's going to come on and talk with this. Uh, He's one of the teams, Sean, as we welcome Monty in. Monty, great to see you. I hope the family is healthy and safe and everyone's doing well. But you're one of the teams that I feel the worst about. Uh, if we can, I know it maybe uh, feels like it goes back a little bit, but about six weeks ago, uh, you know, you're getting ready on a Thursday morning, the MAC championship. Uh, you know, you, you're taking on a number 12 seed in Miami that just knocked off number five Buffalo. You guys, as I've heard, had a great shoot around early in the morning on Thursday. You're getting ready for a game. And if you can just go back a little bit and tell me and the fans just how everything, you know, just un, un, you know, unraveled and went with that Thursday morning. Well, it started off a great day. You know, you wake up early. I think uh, we're we're the only one of the teams to shoot around that morning at uh, where the Cavs play, and our guys were so fired up. I think we took we got on the bus like at seven thirty, but everybody was already there by seven fifteen. Just the excitement for the guys, and we got there. We stretched. Um, everything was positive. I think uh, we caught them by surprise because we we're there so early. And uh, we had a great workout. I always say our guys were locked in. Um, and you could just see the excitement. You know, the fr- you, know you, you get a bye. You know, you're a game away from the semis. You're playing a co- you know opponent that we we're familiar with. And, and then, you know, it was a quick 30-minute shoot around. We came back. We had some breakfast. We told them to go and, uh, you know, relax. And then uh, we brought them back for our pregame meal. And, you know, we showed a highlight video right after the pregame meal, and then they go back to their room. And then, you know, we summon them back down um, 20 minutes later. And I just remember, um, you know, Eugene German and Lacey James, they actually came down in their uniforms. <laughs> they were dressed ready to go. And we weren't going to be leaving for another like 45 minutes. So you can tell our guys was definitely exciting, excited. And then, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, um, you know, everything got shut down. And no matter what, um, the right decision was made, uh, player safeties. Um, you don't want to tell a group that, uh, you know, especially your seniors who, you know, dedicated a lot of those guys three, four years here. This is definitely their shining moment. But, uh, you know, uh, the most important thing was safety. And then from there, it was just some, you know, it was a tough conversation with the team. Um, you know, you try to thank them. You try to, you know, thank the seniors, you know, uh, but it was hard. It was hard because guys left the room They're, you know, they're crying, they're bawling, you know, especially the seniors. And, um, you know, it was like unfinished business, but, uh, um, you know, we had to do the right thing. And unfortunately, then it was a, you know, 360 or not even a 360, but it was a, hey, guys, what we need to do now is uh, go pack up and uh, get you guys back home where it's safe. And it was quiet on the bus. It was definitely quiet on the bus for a couple hours. And then, you know, then some guys finally started talking, you know, as coaches, we were, you know, in the back of the bus sitting next to different guys and just, you know, just reflecting. And, uh, um, but it was, it was definitely, you know, the right call um, by the higher ups. Yeah, Sean. Yeah, it was emotional. Uh, I think Monty. I think he. I think he said it uh, quite well. And I don't want to take this, this, uh, this interaction uh, too low. You know, because that <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I, I, the air was just pu- uh, pulled out of the balloon a little bit right there. But yeah, I think that you're, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, that was emotional uh, having those conversations. But take take us through, you know, what these what these seniors in particular meant. Uh, uh, to you and to the program, because you know, obviously, earning, you know, uh, you know, a share of the the Mac West title and and then getting the buy and all the great things that happened during the course of the year. But what did these young men mean to you in the program? 
Well, I mean, you know, they stayed the course, especially at a time where um, when things, I just remember when Eugene German came in his freshman year, we won 13 games. And when, when it's an era of a lot of things aren't going right, but you're a good player, um, kids have a tendency to want to transfer. You know, we have 900 kids in the portal right now. But uh, seeing, you know, Noah McCarty, who uh, uh, came from a, a smaller city um, where they only had about 200 students to a university, we got 20,000. And just seeing his growth over his four years um, and him staying the course and uh, finishing out. And then, you know, Lacey James, we had him from three years. He had to actually sit out a year and then he stayed the course. You know, um, he actually could have graduated early and then he would have been a, you know, a grad transfer. You know, his last semester, he only had one class. So, you know, them guys sticking it out. We always say we have over about 100 um, practices uh, a year. And then hearing my voice, staying on them, you know, both on and off the court with different things and, and, and just becoming leaders. You know, when they come in as freshmen, they don't say much, they're quiet. And then I just know all three of those guys, their senior year, they definitely led and, and they definitely fostered our, our, our younger guys and the guys we brought in in other classes. And I thought they did an exceptional job. Um, every student athlete, you know, they're big on social media. They read, uh, you know, they read clipsing, clippings. You have preseason magazines. You have different things. And, you know, we weren't picked at the top. But uh, it's good, as I told them, that, you know, we got a chance your senior year to look down at those guys and throw it in some other people's face because uh, this is one of the best teams that uh, I've had since I've been here. It was fun to coach them. They brought their hat. They they brought a, they brought their energy, their effort. Um, they just stayed locked in because um, we had some tough games, and uh, they were resilient, you know. Um, but uh, I was just proud of them. It's a proud moment. I wish that uh, they could have finished off. But you know, at the same time, I wish we could have had a banquet for them, you know, to honor them, you know. But uh, they'll definitely be back, and they won't be forgot. Yeah. Fun team to be a part of and broadcast for me. And uh, yeah, like it's like you said, Monty, unfinished business is really what it it comes down to. Are a lot of the players, how have they been able to get used to e-learning, learning from home? Are a lot of players still in DeKalb? Have they gone home? And have they been able to work out? Have they found gyms still be able to shoot the ball around? Uh, how's your team able, been able to been, been keep fit, but also uh, continue with the books? Well, the first thing we did, we, we reached out to all the families. And we wanted them to do what's best for their family. And uh, in our case, most of them went home. I would say, you know, we have 13 scholarship guys. Um, they all went home. And that was a safer environment because you just don't know. Um, it's just easier to be home because you have meals, you have your parents. Um, they can kind of watch what you do, you know, right away when it's stay at home. No matter what, 18 to 22-year-olds want to venture out. Hmm. Um, the e-learning, that, that hasn't been easy. It's an adjustment when you when you had half your classes in a classroom that you're used to a routine, that thing was broken. And I think it took a little while to get jump started, not to make an excuse, but it's like, all right, you know, um, what was it? Uh, breaks over now. <laughs> we got to get going. And the university did a great job with that. Um, as in the professors was reaching out, you had Blackboard, you had some classes that it's uh, visual that you still, you know, you, like we're doing, you zoom in. Other classes was straight A. This is your work, finish it. Um, the SAS department's done a great job, Anton and, and Nick and uh, Courtney, in my case. Um, but it's a constant thing that you keep reaching out. It's a lot of FaceTime calls. Um, we're still doing our weekly things, what I do with uh, uh, Courtney and Nick, no matter what, weekly. But then it's just a constant, you have to stay on them because their routine has changed. Um, the biggest thing, is when they're on campus as coaches, you touch them every day. You know, like in the spring, we're still lifting weights in the morning. I'm there with them in the morning. And then they have different meetings. And then we might have individuals, you have open gym, that constant contact, or I might stop in, you know, over in the dorms and have lunch with them or go to their apartments. When you don't have that, you know, it's tough. And when I don't think things is right, I call an academic meeting. You know, a lot of times we check in on a Sunday just to get their week jump started and it has changed. It's not a face to, it's a face to face now with Zoom, 
but it's a different feel when you're in the room with me and I don't like how things are going <laughs> or you kind of might need to get a little more, you right. know, jump started per se, that it has to happen, you know, more on a Zoom call. But then, you know, we reach out to the families too. This is NIU Weekly, our second edition. Andy Garcia alongside Sean T. Frazier and the Husky Head men's basketball coach, Mark Montgomery. Uh, Sean, go ahead. Uh, so, so, Coach, I want to know about some of the personal stuff going on. You know, I've been, in, I've been charged in trying to dig in and get the dirty or, or the clean, depending on how you look at it. Uh, so what's going on in the Montgomery house? Okay, you got two beautiful children, a beautiful wife. Talk to me about that, because I know I'm held up in here. I'm locked down with my crew. I want to know what's happening. Now, tell us what's happening in the, in the Montgomery house. Well, I'm going to use one of your words. It was definitely some transition. <laughs> you, you know, because all of a sudden, you know, it started in March where we still had 20-some days of recruiting, even if we would have got eliminated from the tournament. And then three of our weekends in April, I'm recruiting. So I think for the kids, uh, I'll start with them. I think they think it's summer vacation because I'm around a lot more, but it isn't. You know, I'm still recruiting. I still have to work. Um, but it's happy. I think my kids are happy to see me more. And, uh, and, you know, it's fun. Like, I don't, I didn't know Mason's typical day as a two-year-old. And uh, he definitely keeps Alex busy. And then, you know, it, it, it's tough for uh, Alex because with Nicholas, he's a kindergartner and everything's, you know, online too. And now she's homeschooling. Yep. And it is straight havoc. I am so <laughs> it's the truth. So at, at the end of each day, you know, you know, I just say, Hey, wow, you made it through another day. We made it through and you do an incredible job. I don't think she hears that enough during the year because I'm not around a lot. And then I think too, um, my wife, sometimes I think she's happy to see me. I mean, I, I got, I have my job and then jobs around the house. I'm like, wait a minute now. You know, um, <laughs> I'm wore out at the end of the night. But you know what? Just just the chance to watch movies with her, if it's Netflix, if it's sit around, read a book, if it's discuss this pandemic, if it's just catching up with our own personal life, you know, um, you take a lot of things for granted as a coach and you're away from so much. And they handle so many things. And 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 I, I think it hit, I think the third day, and she's like, it's okay. You don't have to coach me through it. I know how to make <laughs> A, uh, what was it that day? It was a, uh, uh, the cheese with the bread. Um, <laughs> grilled cheese? Uh, what's that? Yeah, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to put the butter on. <laughs> like, you don't have to taste it. I mean, do you have, have to bring the whistle cheese. out sometimes, Coach? Do you sometimes bring the whistle out and just blow it every make to make sure it still works? <laughs> yeah. or what? It's, you know, it's just, oh. it, it, it's hard because remember, I was in, the most important part of the season and when you're coaching every single day and telling guys different things they have to do, you have to turn that button off. And, uh, and she's adjusted well, but at the, at the same time, you know what, we're going on bike rides, we're walking. Um, I'm seeing the kids, uh, we go down and it's like a little river by the house throwing rocks in. I actually saw Mason. He, he, I remember at the beginning of March, he couldn't ride his, uh, uh, his tricycle. And, and now he's riding a tricycle. And then what's the name has taken his wheels off. Mason, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas has taken his, you know, little wheels off. Now he's, a, you know, he's doing it with just two wheels. But it, it, it's fun. It's fun. I'm, I'm watching my kids grow up at the same time, which is fun. That's awesome. Uh, recruiting. I know that's a big part of what you guys are doing now. How is that going? How is it different this year because of this? Well, recruiting, Andy, I'm going to tell you, it's like, uh, I call it uh, speed dating. You know, or internet dating or whatever you want to call it, where, you know, I am so used to, you know, going to gyms, watching them work out, um, having them on campus and doing a campus visit, having them interact with our guys, play open gym with our guys. So all that's done. So now through uh, Synergy, uh, I just watch a lot of games. And, and I say it that uh, when you have three assistants and, and they do a great job and they filter the information to me. So it's like I have three jobs to do because every assistant is selling each kid. But uh, you know what? Through technology, um, through, you know, resources, through relationships, through, you know, um, talking to other people in different leads. If it's, you know, if we're recruiting a kid out of Florida at a junior college or Texas or Kansas or California, I've watched so many games and uh, it, it's different. It is definitely different, but uh, 
we've landed some kids, we do Zoom meetings, we do the whole presentation still, how we see you fit in. Um, we have the PowerPoint slides. Chris McMartin has done an unbelievable job with that. So they've definitely made my life a lot easier. Sean? No, you know, I, I, you, you talk a lot about recruiting and talk about uh, what's going on. What's your, what's your projections? What do you think? What do you think from a overall back to play? What's your, what's your vibe about the future for uh, uh, starting back up uh, in the fall and winter? Well, well, usually we have summer, and we're figuring that we won't be here this summer. Um, uh, we had four seniors. You take Alizé, Travis, too. So we have to bring some different kids in. But, you know, we're in the same boat with everybody else, that once they say that uh, we can get after it, uh, we'll get after it. I know our guys, um, they kind of tell you what they're doing. So it's not like they're just sitting around not trying to do anything. I'm trying to hold them back right now because safety is important. When it's a stay enough, stay at home order, you know, some guys are still sneaking to a basketball court. You, know, you can still do things, um, trying to keep their mental game tight too, but also, you know, um, sit-ups, push-ups, going out for a jog. Um, I remember Zaire and the team telling me he got creative where he had to put books and different things in a, um, a suitcase when he's doing his bench presses because all of a sudden you leave this environment that you have all those things at your disposal and now you're back at home and you're not used to being at home. You just don't have the, the weights that you have. But our guys have gotten creative. It's easy to go out and run some lines and stay in shape. You know, it's easy to dribble the basketball and, you know, find a hoop, shoot some. But you know what? It's okay um, because our sport is 12 months of the year. It's okay to take some time on, let your body heal. Um, and then we'll get refocused. I know our guys will be charged up. That's the uncertainty that they have because they keep asking, when are we coming back? When are we coming back? And it's just unfortunate. I don't have those answers yet. But, uh, some things, I have two kids in the, uh, the state of uh, Georgia and where they're opening up things, and I'm telling them to still, you know, you know be very, very cautious. Um, you have time to work on your game. We have time in the fall. Uh, we're going to get this thing right. We don't start season until games doesn't start play until November. You know, doesn't take long to get in shape because you're never really out of shape. And uh, we'll be focused and ready to go. We talked to Thomas Hammock last week about, you know, different coaches from around the nation getting together and trying to find out things that maybe they haven't discussed as coaches together. Have you done that with mentors and, and coaches around the nation as well? Well, definitely. You know, I always start, you know, in lead play first because we have some different uh, things going to go on for Mac basketball. Um, I definitely, no matter what, I'm always watching old tapes for ourselves. Um, you definitely reach out to the other guys in different leagues when you're still recruiting Sometimes they've seen some players that you haven't seen, and that kind of helps. Um, but basketball-wise, you know what? Other than uh, focusing on, you know, I'm watching my team now and, and trying to watch clips where Eugene German isn't involved with the ball <laughs> to get those things prepped. So, you know, all of a sudden we're going to have a different team. And uh, that's the new challenge. And I'm trying to watch clips when, you know, Lacey James not in there and someone else is going to anchor, um, be the anchor for us. But definitely. Um, you find you try to find different ways by talking to different coaches what they're doing differently. If it's recruiting, if it's meeting uh, with their players, um, it's have you heard something different? You know, we're still trying to do scheduling. So we're still calling guys to still try to get games and every uh, athletic department is different. And uh, so we're still working on that. But I'm always going to reach out to, to basketball minds that kind of think like myself or that I know and uh, pick their brain. Last question for you. We appreciate the time. Uh, your thoughts out to the fans. What do you want the fans uh, to know about with the program moving forward? And uh, just your message to what you want to say to Husky fans. You know, this is the fans that uh, they were so great last year. And their support of all sports, not just men's basketball, is always greatly appreciated. Um, we want them to be safe. You know, we want them to have family time. You know, NIU will be okay. We will be back working in the fall. We're doing everything we can to uh, get our teams ready, but also get ourselves ready too. But uh, the fans, you know what? It's a great time to reflect on family. It's a great time to, you know, read a book or do some things that you've been putting off. But, you know, just stay safe. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you guys soon. Mark Montgomery, great to talk to you again. What a crazy last six weeks it's been, but it seems like you guys are moving on and getting there and getting ready for next season. Appreciate the time, and hopefully I'll get to see you in person soon, and I hope the family stays safe and strong. 
Thanks, Andy. I appreciate that. Thanks, Sean. That's Mark Montgomery. Take care, Take care Monty. That's, uh, you know, Sean, great to have him on and, and, and get the perspective of what a team like that had to go through. You were there as well with all that. At that was not an easy time. No, it wasn't. It was uh, very emotional, uh, very dramatic. Um, yeah, the, the, he had talked about Lacey and uh, Gino. Uh, uh, it, it was surreal, you know, having to go in front of that team and to see those tears well up and to understand that their season was effectively over uh, was uh, was unbelievably uh, devastating. Um, so yeah, yeah, you know, we, we took a low point in our broadcasts right there, Andy. But I think that uh, I, the fans needed to know this was this was devastating for our program. And basically, like what Monty said, you know, arguably one of his best teams that he's ever had here. And uh, I, I firmly believe that uh, we were poised to make one hell of a run, if not. Uh, be the outright champion uh, 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 in the MAC. So um, the, the, the kids were ready. They were ready. You saw their you saw their faces. Yep. Uh, they had some unfinished business. Yep. And again, hopefully we'll see basketball come back on time. Uh, get ready for fall and uh, the 2020-2021 season uh, moving forward. The head coach Mark Montgomery. Great stuff today, Sean. And again, I hope your household's good too. We'll talk more about that next week. I heard about Monty, what he's going through, and Thomas. Uh, I know I've had to kind of get used to. Who you have? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I know you're doing. We'll talk more about that next week as we have another edition of NIU Weekly. We'll talk to another head coach. Uh, and again, if you want to subscribe, to NIU Athletics on their YouTube channel. All the information, all the videos like this, highlights are on there. And uh, I know Frazier's Corner is also out, NIUHuskies.com from Sean Frazier, the latest information um, from the Cab. But uh, we'll be back next week, NIU Huskies. Looking forward to it again uh, with NIU Weekly, uh, Sean. I appreciate it, Andy. Thank you so much. And please stay safe. I will. You too. As we talk to you next week, until then, go Huskies. <laughs>